chances are you may have an indoor foliage plant or flowering plant that was actually developed with tissue culture or propagated by tissue culture. And joining me today is Doug Needham, Assistant Professor in Horticulture, and Doug is going to help us understand this process a little bit more and maybe extrapolate it where we can actually do it at home. And Doug, thanks for joining us again. Oh, you're welcome. Glad to be with you. Tell us a little bit more about tissue culture, what it is, and its pros and cons. Well, tissue culture also goes by other names, in vitro culture, cell culture, micropropagation. They're all basically referring to the same thing, and that's producing many of plants from very small pieces of a plant whether it be just a, a piece of a petal, a piece of a leaf, a piece of a stem, a piece of a root. Now the most important part of the whole process is a culture or medium, right, that you're actually growing the plant in. Tell That's us correct. about the recipe and how that step is accomplished. Okay, the tissue culture media, it's important that it be sterile because of course it contains all kinds of chemicals that uh, bacteria and fungi love to grow on as well. So we have to use a sterile media and the various components in here. There's sugar to provide a carbon source for the plants to continue to, to grow. <clears throat> then, and in that situation we're using sucrose or just common table sugar. There's also um, auger in here that solidifies the media so that we have a solid in here. That way it doesn't uh, spill. Gives a little support for the plant part that we're going to place in there. There's a chemical called myo-inositol, and that's used as an os osmoticum that helps relieve some of the osmotic pressures as we're taking a piece of a plant and putting it into tissue culture. There's also then various micro and macronutrients, and what we're using is a what's called Mirashigi and Skoog salt base. And Mirashigi and Skoog are two gentlemen uh, years ago that really pioneered the field of in vitro culture in determining what was essential for these plants to grow in culture. So it has many of the macro and micronutrients, kind of like the fertilizer component if you want to think of it that way. There's also then uh, hormones in here to stimulate either root and or shoot initiation. We use benzyl adenine as the cytokine source that stimulates shoot initiation and we use the NAA, naphthalene acetic acid, as an auxin source which stimulates root production. So we're not just throwing those together, I mean that's where a lot that's of the right. research is, exact amounts of those various things. Now for a homeowner who wanted to try this, can they purchase that already mixed up? Yes, there are companies that specialize in providing these uh, components already mixed, pre-sterilized, ready to use in the home, especially in the classroom is the real purpose. Right. And one of those is Carolina Biological. Okay. So that, that makes it a little bit easier. Now, once we have our mix ready to go, sterilization is still important. What, what's the next step in the... Okay, the next step is preparing the plant uh, part for introduction into tissue culture. And we're using the, an African violet leaf. And the first step is to soak that in a 10% Clorox solution. And that's made just by adding one part Clorox into nine parts water and we have a 10% solution. It needs to stay in that solution for 15 minutes. At that point, after the 15 minutes, we'll mist that down with the 70% ethanol, which is similar to rubbing alcohol. Mm -hmm. Mist it down and we'll place it then into our sterile area. And in this situation, our sterile area is an oven cooking bag. And these are just nice because it's a big bag that's clear, so it's easy to see inside it. Mm -hmm. Plastic bags, the way they're manufactured, makes them naturally sterile because of the heat process and how they're produced. So it's sterile inside until you open it. So therefore, everything that goes in, you have to make sure that it's misted off with the alcohol, including your hands and arms. Okay. Now, once you're placing the things in the bag, you then have to sterilize all of your equipment too in the bag, is that correct? All of the equipment inside this bag has been pre-sterilized. And before it was placed in, it was misted off okay. with the alcohol to, be, to assure that there's no bacteria on the surfaces. Now, how did you pre-sterilize it, though? I mean, that's a very important... Okay. Sterilization uh, here at the university, we do it in an autoclave, which is just a giant pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. Now, at home, you could do that in your canning pressure cooker mm -hmm. that you may use for canning fruits and vegetables. Or even in an oven? Is you could do it in an oven as well. It's, it's a little more difficult, but it can okay. be done in an oven. All right. Now, normally you would do this process in the bag, but so it's easier to see on camera. You're going to do it above bag. Why don't you uh, 
show us how to take this section and okay. place it and, and we'll go ahead and get started. Here. We'll kind of mock it up here just so that it is easier to see. Be sure and take off any jewelry. You know, it's kind of hard to get rings off, but if you can, go ahead and take those off. And then you want to mist down very well, thoroughly with the, the alcohol because there's all kinds of bacteria and fungi on your hands and arms. Mm -hmm. So at this point, then we'd be prepared to go into the bag and do all of our work in the bag. We'll pretend and do it outside so you can okay. see better. So the tools that you'll need then are? Uh... You'll need a razor blade, or if you happen to have one, a cork bore is very handy because you can quickly take discs of tissue, but a razor blade or a knife would work well too. A pair of tweezers or forceps in this case. Uh, we're going to need some sterile distilled water to place the leaf into, and you'll probably want to have some type of uh, surface that you can do that cutting on, and we just have a little petri dish in there that we were going to use, but you could use any uh, flat glass plate that you might have handy in the home. Now you're going to demonstrate on an African violet leaf. That's right. Let me reiterate that this normally would be done inside the bag mm -hmm. in sterile conditions. So we take the leaf out, notice not touching it with hands, move that leaf then to the sterile distilled water and allow it to sit in that solution for another 15 minutes. That will rinse off the Clorox, mm -hmm. which would be damaging to the plant tissue itself. After 15 minutes, then that's ready to be taken out and placed onto your sterile glass surface, or in this case, our little Petri dish. In fact, I'll flip this over so you can see the veins a little better on the back mm -hmm. side. And we're going to use then this cork bore, which you could use a, a knife if you preferred, and cut out little discs of tissue right along the veins. In fact, you want to have a piece of that vein in there because that assures that you're going to get some young plantlets to grow. And then we can take our forceps and pick out that piece of tissue. Now this process, Doug, normally you would be doing it under the bag, but in a commercial setting they would be doing it in a hood? That's that right. right. There are laminar flow hoods. That is then just placed right on the surface okay. of the auger. They're laminar flow hoods that make it much easier than trying to work inside a bag commercially. Provides a large desk space mm -hmm. where the, the operator can freely move around and transfer materials. And it maintains a sterile environment by constantly filtering out all microbes. Now you have examples of the different stages of growth too, don't you? That's right. We have examples showing of how it would look in about a one month time. And at that point you'll see a, a bubbly mass of cells. And that's called callus. And that's the precursor to root and shoot initiation. That occurs in the, pretty much the first month. Then the second month, you'll begin to see some leaves form. Mm -hmm. Very tiny little leaves will begin to form all around the callus. By the third month, we'll have leaves and hopefully even roots showing. And they'll soon be ready then to be removed and planted into a pot of okay. potting mix. And you have one that you would estimate just hundreds of little plantlets inside that culture. Exactly. From one disc of tissue, we can get hundreds of identical plants. Okay, and that's that's the whole purpose of tissue culture. That's the purpose, and that's why it's used so widely in the indoor foliage industry, is because they can produce Diefenbachias, rubber plants, ferns, so forth, by the hundreds, and have them virtually identical. Well, it's very interesting, and also Dr. Needham has adapted this where we can use in classroom situations or with youth projects. So if you'd like to get more information about the steps, you can contact your county extension office, and it really is kind of an exciting laboratory type project that ties in horticulture and shows the benefits in, in the industry and how it's applied. So we want to thank you for joining us again. and. Uh, who knows, again, maybe one of your plants, and we've talked about the mosquito plant, which is an example, again, of how one was developed by tissue culture. And Doug, thanks again. You're welcome. Good to be with you.